Hello YouTube friends, Ben Ochart here. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today I want to talk with you about water changes and in particular how to do water changes simultaneously on a number of tanks. I'm going to cover with you how I do it. Uh, currently I'm running about four tanks, uh, soon to be uh, five, seven tanks in the next probably three to four months and um, I'm going to share with you my routine that makes sure, that ensures that I don't make the common water change mistakes that very often can result in, uh, in fish that then struggle or in some cases even die after a water change. Okay, let's get into it right now. My trick for getting it right every single time is to um, is to go through each step with, with all the tanks before moving on to the next step. In other words, the first thing I do with the tank is I clean it up. And by that what I mean is I do basic uh, glass cleaning. I'll clean the front panels. Us using something like this, I'll go ahead and, uh, and clean the front panels of the tank. You can see there's areas here where there's a little bit of uh, a little bit of algae and uh, so I'll do all that cleanup first as well as uh, maybe move any decor that might need to be moved in order to get like in in areas where things can can accumulate so I'll do that I'll take this step with all all of my tanks in this tank I have a combination of real and artificial and ultimately I'll have all artificial because uh, these, these fish, the fish that are in this tank, the South American cichlids, uh, will, you know, they are destroying the, uh, they're destroying the plants. So I will also take this opportunity to, to get some of the, some of the algae that can, that, can, that can sometimes show up on these plants and just do a cleanup on them, just a very light cleanup and uh, you know, you can also pull them out and do a major cleanup under running water or even use, um, even use bleach or uh, other things like peroxide, hydrogen peroxide, things like that to clean these up. But uh, if, if you just stay on top of them and give them an occasional uh, cleaning with, in this case, just a piece of a fine sponge that I cut a while back, just a leftover piece from a piece I'd used to put in a filter. It cleans, it cleans it up nicely, and uh, if you do it every week, you stay on top of it, you really don't have to do a lot of major, major cleaning. We have to pull them out and leave them in bleach or whatever overnight, and then soak them in a water conditioner for a couple days, go through that whole process. If you just stay on top of it, and just give them each a little bit of a, a rub every now and then, you'll be fine. I then repeat the process with the uh, with the next tank, doing a cleanup, just a general cla glass cleanup, glass and plant cleanup, picking up any areas of, of uh, algae buildup on the front panel. This glass is actually in pretty good shape. Again, I'll, again, I'll clean up the plants. Any um, any algae buildup on the plants. Sometimes these will get little bits of brown on them. Comes, <clears throat> comes out pretty easily. Not too bad. I limit the uh, amount of time that I run my lights. They're on a timer. And so I don't get too bad of an algae buildup. I love white sand, but I will say this. It shows every little speck. Every little speck shows up on the white sand. So it's constantly reminding you of when you need to clean. And so, uh, and you also have to be a little bit careful when vacuuming because you can scoop up the sand pretty easily. But by moving the uh, siphon back and forth and staying just a little bit above the level of the sand, you can usually pick up all of the junk. In my aquarium, because of the way water flows, the detritus tends to accumulate on this side of the tank, on the left side. So 
My water change is a combination water change vacuuming. And I end up with removing about two buckets, two buckets of water from the 55. And that's about how much I remove on a water change. So as you can see, I'm picking up a lot of junk here. And what I'm getting also on this tank is a lot of wood. The fish uh, have been chewing on the plants and now they're chewing on the wood. So uh, you see little wood, wood fragments along with the usual poop and other detritus. Sometimes I have to get under this expert Matic filter on the side. So I just move it up a little bit and tilt it and just tilt it a little bit. And uh, it can actually be a little bit out of the water and still function. I let my filters continue to run during a water change. That's just the way I do it and uh, the way I've been doing it. If I'm gonna do a very major water change, of course, and the water level's gonna get pretty low, naturally I'll turn off my filters. Also, the heaters stay on. Be sure to turn off your heaters during a water change if you, if you, run, them, uh, if you run them up and down the way most people do. I'm running mine, as you can see, horizontal near the bottom of the tank. And so I just leave them on during the water change. If you're running them down vertical, be sure to turn them off because it can actually uh, damage the heater to be exposed, to be outside of the water. So I've picked up a lot of the detritus. I don't expect to get every single, uh, every single speck. It will drive yourself crazy if you do that because as soon as you're actually cleaning, they're actually dropping more waste. And so uh, if you're trying to get every little speck two seconds after the water change, you'll notice more, more gunk in the tank. So don't drive yourself crazy. Don't go all uh, OCD on it. Just get as much as you can. And, uh, and in my case, two buckets full, and that's good enough for now. Some of you use a python where you, where you siphon to a sink, and that's certainly a good way to do it. Uh, for the sake of this video, I'm doing it into a bucket. And sometimes the sink, siphoning into the sink doesn't give me the amount of suction or pressure that I'd like to see. And so sometimes I'll go ahead and just use a bucket. If you need to move the, the, the uh, siphon from one side of the tank to the other, just cover the opening with your hand and then quickly drop it in. And that way you don't lose suction. If you need to move the actual drain of your siphon from one bucket to another, same thing, just cover the opening with your thumb and drop it into the next bucket. And that way you don't spill water everywhere. So I'll pull a couple buckets of water out of this tank and that'll be the extent of it. So I'll have a combination vacuuming and water change going on. So now I have two tanks that have been vacuumed and usually I'll do all four, but for the sake of this video, I don't wanna to take too much of your time, but I'll go ahead and just do these two tanks and then I'll show you how I fill them. Now what I do is I use a product, in this case, Fritz Complete. It's a product that I get from uh, the aquarium co-op. Give it a good shake. And um, some people like to use the pump. I'm kind of old school, I just use the, uh, the cap. And I put a cap full which is good for about 50 gallons into each one of the tanks. These are 55 gallon tanks. You may be wondering why don't I put more than a cap full. But keep in mind that you actually are displacing a lot of gallons with the decor. So between the substrate, between the substrate and the decor, there's probably about 10 gallons that are, uh, <laughs> that are not that are uh, not water, but actually objects in the tank. In the Malawi tank, I'll use a little bit of this cichlid lake salt. You can see it here, cichlid lake salt. I'll go ahead and add that now as well. It just dissolves pretty quickly, actually. Keep in mind that while you're doing all this, you may have had a temperature shift in your tank. So don't just assume what your tank temperature is. I go ahead and uh, we'll take the temperature 
right before filling it up, just to get the best idea of where my uh, temp is at in each tank before I fill it up. In this case, it looks like I'm at 78, 78.2, if you can see that, 78.2. So that's the temperature I'll match for when I fill this up. So we're right on the money, 78.2. Let's go ahead and fill the tank. After this tank is uh, filled up to the rim, I'll then simply sh uh, shut off the water going to the tank. I'll let the, con the water, I'll let the water continue to run because it's at a good temperature. But I'll, but I'll go ahead and shut it off from running down the hose, and and then move the hose, transfer the hose to this tank. Both tanks are already treated, right? And just let the water fill up this tank. The uh, the main point I want to make in all of this is I'm doing each, per each procedure entirely before moving on to anything else. In other words, I'm not emptying this tank and then filling it and then emptying this one and then filling it. I'm, I'm, I'm doing the housekeeping, right? The, the glass cleaning, the plant cleaning, moving of decor, that kind of thing to all the tanks. Then I'm emptying the water from all the tanks. Then I'm treating all the tanks and then I'm filling all the tanks and it's all done in one sort of lateral step that way and that way I never get caught up in that you know that did I forget to did I forget to treat that tank Did I forget to add something to that tank that I not you know you don't get mixed up and, and the more tanks you add the more likelihood you can get mixed up if you're emptying one and filling another and treating one while you're emptying another and it's easy to lose track. This way it's almost impossible for me to lose track because I do it all in one step. Every tank is cleaned, uh, every tank is vacuumed and emptied, every tank is treated, every tank is filled. And then I'm complete with my water changes and I'm positive I haven't missed a step. And that results in some, in some happy, healthy fish uh, after the water change, as opposed to fish who are struggling because they're dealing with ammonia or perhaps the temperature wasn't matched correctly or something of that nature. And now I have fish that are, that are gasping or doing something. And in some cases, even dying after a water change, okay? So skip that. Uh, if you have multiple tanks, if you have three, four, five, you know, if, you get, if you're over 10, you probably need to have some automated water change systems because <laughs> that can get pretty busy. But uh, certainly, you know, up, into, up to about 10 tanks, this system will work, uh, work for you perfectly. Do each step across the boards, uh, one step at a time for all the tanks, and that way you'll never miss a step, and uh, you'll end up with a successful water change every time, okay? I hope that helped. Share your comments below about water changes, any tips you might have, and I look forward to seeing you on Saturday at the Cichlids and Coffee live stream. All right, thank you so much, bye-bye. Thank you.